Hey folks, I'm Brett Kinsella and I have early access to chat GPT plugins and I have a cool demo for you today that combines e-commerce with multimodal display images, plugins, and links to e-commerce sites on the web direct from chat GPT. It's actually a great solution that I'm really excited to show you. However, there is one issue and I'll get to that at the end because it's something that I think is going to come up a lot for people who are trying to use this. But Let's get to the good stuff first. So I went ahead and decided I wanted to build a fence from my yard. And you can see at the top here, we've got the plugins model selected and the plugins selected. So when you're using plugins, you're actually using a slightly different model than you are with typical chat GPT, which is the 3.5 or the GPT-4 model. And the first thing you'll see is up at the top in the response, it shows this little button here. And that's indicating which plugin is being used. In this case, it's Lowe's. So Lowe's is one of the plugins that's enabled right now. There's 22 at the moment, and this is the only one that's really DIY or associated with fence building. And you can see when it starts generating, what it's doing is it's actually giving you the information about the link first, and it's then uh, having, adding a URL. And then what it actually does is then it updates the bullet point to have to, to just make it a title, with a hot link. So you can actually go from chat GPT right to the web for any one of these products. So another interesting thing that we have here is when you go up to that plugin button, you can push it and it'll actually expand and it'll show you exactly what it's doing, uh, which I think is you know, pretty fascinating that you can actually see some of that. And I think we'll be able to scroll up there right now and you can look at all of the different calls that are going back and forth between chat GPT and the plugin service. And you can see at the bottom, there's some of this prompt priming that's going on. It's instructions to the plugin about how to respond. And then at the bottom, look at this, it's offering to show me images. So I don't know if you've used chat GPT with images before, but I'm going to ask it to show me the images since it offered. And what it's going to do is it's going to start replicating each of those responses, those URLs, and it's pulling an image from the web page that those URLs are on. So you can see we have a fence here. Uh, we're going to have another fence and another fence. And this is what the plugin is doing. It's basically just going back. There's instructions that are going from ChatGTP to the website and saying, okay, for this URL, pull the featured image back. And it's displaying this here. So. We were all promised by Sam Altman and Greg Brockman from OpenAI that we would have multimodal chat GPT, multimodal in GPT-4, and you know here it is. And this almost looks like a e-commerce web page from the late 1990s. This is sort of what we were dealing with. It's not as fancy as what we had, but it's in context of what we were doing. And you know, one of the other things, if we look at these different visuals, we can scroll up and down, but I can go to the link of one of those and it'll actually take me to that web page so that I can buy that fence from Lowe's, although it's on, it's not in stock. And so they're trying to sell me something else, but I think that's you know, kind of a fascinating solution. Now, I hope you really like that. I want to show you the issue that I have with this. So if you remember what I asked for is what tools do I need to build a fence for my yard? What did it give me? It gave me five answers of different type of fence materials that I can use. That's not exactly the tools. That's actually the building supplies, but okay. What if I really want to know the tools? Well, what I have to do is we went back in and you have to select a different model. So in this case, I go and I take off the plugin model. I select GPT-4. I ask the exact same question. And then what happens? It answers kind of the way that we would have expect ChatGPT to do in the past. It starts adding up all of the different types of responses. So, you know, measuring tape, it's going to go down, it's going to have hammers and nails and nail gun and all these other types of things. Pretty amazing that we think about the separation of these two models. And it's really going to leave a little bit of cognitive load on the user to think about what they really want from the system. And they're going to have to proactively go into plugins. Now, I also asked a follow-up question to uh, chat GPT in the GPT-4, what you just said, where can I buy these types of building supplies or tools? And it mentioned places like Home Depot and Lowe's and your local hardware store, but it's a list. It's not hyperlinks. It's not related to actually buying the solutions. And so what we have is we have 
two different models. We've got a model that answers questions. We have a model that takes you into an e-commerce workflow. And there's several level of plugins. I'll do some other demos so you can see how this works. It may be in restaurants and doing math problems or accessing information from the web. All these plugins exist. But when we look at this e-commerce example, I think it's really fascinating. A lot of people said, oh, geez, how are people going to make money off this if they create plugins and ChatGTP you know, enables them to connect to the plugin? Well, you can see right there. You have links directly to sell something in the website. And I will say, you know, many of you will know Adam Chire, who is one of the co-founders of Siri and Viv Labs, which became Bixby later. He's sort of a giant in the conversational assistant space. He and I were talking about this very issue last week about how they handle the request with plugins. And he was very concerned that it was going to be some sort of a disjointed experience. And you know what? He's kind of right. If I know what I want to do and I select the right model, I can go in, I can have the e-commerce experience. If I don't know that a plugin is going to be able to answer the question or I have something else, then I have to go in and select another model and go through that regular flow. And the ideal scenario would be all of these things would just automatically happen. It would automatically know when to put, choose a plugin or when not to. But that's one of the things we have to work through. It's not just about creating an app store or a plugin store that people can use. There's a lot of user experience elements that still need to be sorted out. I hope you really like uh, this. And tell me in the comments what you think about it. And when you get access, show me some examples Feel free to ask questions. I'll make sure I respond to them. And if you're not already signed up for our Generative AI daily newsletter on news and demos and things like you saw here today, uh, just go to bit.ly forward slash Synthedia. I hope to see you there. I hope to see some comments here. Thanks a lot. And I'm really excited about what's going on here despite some of the issues. All right, folks. Bye-bye.